incredible. Whew. What a, what a sentence. Be oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. It's really such a joy and pleasure uh, that you snuck up on me because I want to talk a little bit about how inspiration works. There's a really powerful story in this week's Parsha in Kisisa where HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Lo yireni adam v'chai, you can't see me directly and live. Instead, God says, you can see me'achorai, from behind, from my back. And I think that this is not just a distinction that we make when it comes to seeing God. God does not have a face and God does not have a back. I think this is a distinction that relates to how we inspire and how we relate to inspiration itself. And what I mean by that is very often we think that inspiration is about telling people head on what our values are and listing them out to them and showing them, Uraney, I want to show you exactly what I believe and telling you everything. But if you look at life and you look at your own life, Oftentimes, what inspires and leaves the most enduring mark on your own life is not what you saw head on. It's not the face of Yiddishkeit. It is Meachorai. It is the back. And what I mean by that is it is the experiences, the moments when no one was actually watching or lecturing or talking to you directly, but what you saw people doing in between the moments. I know in my own life, my love of learning didn't come from my parents coming down and saying, you got to learn more, you got to learn more, though they certainly did do that as well. It was from the fact that in between on a Shabbos afternoon, on a Friday night, on a weeknight, I would always see my parents uh, curled up on the living room couch studying Torah. My mother would always be learning Chumash. My father had a Chavrusa, still has a Chavrusa for over a decade in Minchas Chinuch. And that's what left the biggest impact on me. And when I think about inspiring others and the inspiration we have in our own lives, or the inspiration maybe that we're searching for in our own lives, maybe what we are lacking is not simply the head-on what the values are, but it's those meachorai moments, those moments in between when we're not lecturing, we're not telling people what to think or what to believe, but we show them what we believe by what we do when nobody else is watching. And I think about every break in every Shabbaton, every moment in between, when teenagers are watching us, when we're watching one another, even not instructively, but just in passing through, I think that's what leaves the greatest mark and shapes our values more than anything else. So what's most important is what you're doing, what you're reading, what you're connecting to, when no one else really is watching. And that way, the values that you transmit, while they may not be the punim, uh, they certainly are the meachorai, what we tell from behind. Well, you can't see a person's face, you can still see their values as they pass by and pass on through.